Alright, hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another episode of Gaming Gains. These are all the games I picked up for the last few months, let me show you what I've got. First off, starting off with some portable consoles, we have the Nintendo DS. Uh, a couple of games I picked up from Cash Converters, More Brain Training for $5, and also Scribblenauts for $5. I've been playing Scribblenauts Remix on the iPhone, pretty average game, but it is free. Um, I'd like to see how the console version holds up, but I'm sure it'll be much better. Um, and the remaining games I have are Japanese imports, which is exciting, so let's start off with Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Love the Kingdom Hearts franchise, so there's a portable game. Um, really want to get the HD remakes on PS3, and they might even be on PS4. Next we have Unchained Blades EX4. Know nothing about this game, but has an anime art style. So that's exciting. Then we have Mario and Luigi RPG 4 with a nice cover art there. Next we have one that looks really cool with some chibi anime art style on there, Fantasy Life. So, you know, look at all these characters and character designs. Hopefully it's an RPG set in a fantasy world. One that I'm excited to check out because the Nintendo DS is actually region free, which is cool. Then we have EX Troopers, another anime art style looking game. Have no idea what this game is either, but cool to have nonetheless. Moving on to the PlayStation Portable from the same seller, I bought a bunch of imports on this console. Ghosts and Goblins or Ghouls and Ghosts maybe. It is the uh, remake on PSP with updated graphics and stuff like that. So cool to have even though it's a budget version. Next we have Guilty Gear XX, the Midnight Carnival hashtag reload there, so get a load of that title. Uh, fighting game from the Guilty Gear franchise, one that I personally love. Uh, and I really love fighting games, especially on the PSP, I don't know what it is, but having them, you know, the console in your hand and playing it, it just seems really natural. Next we have a horror game that is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Um, one that received pretty mixed reviews, but, you know... Should be cool to check out. I've never played a horror game on the PSP. Then we have Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. So this series is huge in Japan. You know, it's just a powerhouse over there. Um, I'm not sure if this one ever came over to the West. But there it is on PSP. Then we have a Square Enix game, The Third Birthday. Uh, it looks a lot like Final Fantasy 13, the character and the art style. It seems to be somewhat of a you know, survival horror thriller video game. I could be wrong about that, but it kind of looks like Resident Evil on the back. Maybe it's more action orientated. I'll have to give it a go and see what I think. Next, we have Silent Hill Zero. I'm not entirely familiar with this game, but it is obviously another survival horror iteration in the series. Has some cool looking gameplay in the back there. Then we have one that looks really cool. Valhalla Knights 2 Battle Stance. I have no idea what this is. I'm thinking it is a RPG um, and it looks like it's kind of a real-time action RPG from the back here, but lots of characters there and, you know, a medieval fantasy western knight setting. I'll have to check that one out. Then we have Final Fantasy Type-0 here with some really cool looking artwork on the front. Again, a lot of characters on the back. And finally, for the imports, we have Tales of Verses. I think this is related to the Tales series. I could be wrong, but it seems like it's a fighting game um, set in that uh, universe. But I could be entirely wrong. And the final couple of games here, we have Tekken 6, the Platinum Edition. And one I took a chance on from Cash Converters for $5. It is Zendoku Sendoku Battle Action. So it's a Sendoku puzzle game, but I don't know, it kind of looks fun and puzzle games can be really fun on the PSP, so I took a chance on that one. Moving on now to the PS3, we have a bunch of RPGs, starting off with Time and Eternity. This is one that kind of split the fan base. a lot of people hated it, a lot of people loved it. It has a really unique art style and gameplay setting. Uh, and it's something to do with time travel, um, so it is a JRPG from NIS America. Next we have Drake's Deception Special Edition with the uh, slipcase here, and if we slide that out, there it is in the booklet. And if we open this one up, 
there's some nice artwork on the inside and you can actually go through and kind of use it as a real book like it has all different pages and things like that and then there's just a standard disc and a manual and I actually bought that one from Doc Dazza the anime youtuber uh, along with a bunch of anime, so thank you for that. Next we have a foil slipcase variant of Bioshock on the PlayStation 3. One that I haven't played, but I will be playing on the PlayStation 3. I want to get the Ultimate Rapture Edition with all of the DLC, but for now I have that slipcase variant. Another collector's edition, we have Devil May Cry 4. If I slide it out, it is in a tin case here and it has kind of like a shine to it as well if we open it up there is a standard manual there's the artwork and then we have this the art of the devil booklet which is just the art book for the series it has a bunch of character sketches and designs so good stuff. Next we have one that's kind of like a smaller spin-off version of the series and that is Ratchet and Clank Nexus. I've never played any of the modern Ratchet and Clank games but I used to love the trilogy back on the PS2. I played them to death, especially the third one, Up Your Arsenal, that was one of the best games on that console. So much fun leveling up all the weapons and exploring the worlds. Um, but this one's brand new and sealed and I hear it's a kind of short game but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I'll have to Jump in and check that one out. Next we have the Ultimate Sith Edition of Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Uh, me and my girlfriend have just started playing Star Wars Lego The Complete Collection on Xbox 360. And I'm kind of getting back into the Star Wars universe. Um, I want to go back and watch the films, but uh, if you're not aware, this is kind of like a action... I don't know if you call it an RPG, but you, you play as a character and you basically choose the outcome of, of which uh, side he takes. So you can either pledge your allegiance to the Jedi or the Sith Lords and whatever choices you make um, affects the outcome of the game and this version has all of the DLC and the bonus equipment and stuff like that. So cool to add that one to my collection. Next we have a sealed copy of Final Fantasy XIII 2. We have the standard edition of Resident Evil 5, a game that I personally love. This is a fantastic co-op game, one that I played through with my girlfriend, and we also played through Resident Evil 6, um, which a lot of people hated, especially when it came out, but they did fix the controls, and it's not actually a bad sequel to Resident Evil 5. Not as good, but still decent. Next, we have a game that was really underrated back when it came out in 2008, and that is Mirror's Edge. Since then, um, they've released a sequel, and kind of everyone knows about this game, but it used to be one that I really wanted to pick up, and I, you know, I haven't picked it up until now, which is crazy. Uh, but it's a first-person parkour game where you can choose the gameplay. You can either go in, kind of like, action and take everyone out, or you can go stealthy, uh, or more like just avoiding everyone, and it's a really fast-paced running game. One where you jump from rooftops and, you know, through ventilation systems and all crazy stuff like that. Can't wait to check this one out, um, been wanting it for years. Next we have the complete edition for Mortal Kombat. I love this game, I love this franchise and this one has Kratos from God of War and also Freddy and a bunch of other characters, it has all of the DLC on here. This game was actually banned in Australia, um, it didn't get released until a year later and oh my goodness, like they had to rechange all of the rating system just to get this game into the country. An absolutely brutal fighting game, one that I love and I've been looking forward to picking up and I finally can say I own it. Next we have Overlord 2, a minion based domination game. And finally we have Borderlands, the foil slipcase variant there. The final console I have is a couple of games on the Xbox 360, uh, Dungeon Siege 3, limited edition. I already had the standard edition but now I have the limited edition. It's an overhead RPG dungeon crawl uh, series with four player co-op and it's a really, you know, it's a decent game, not the best, not the worst. And then finally we have an Xbox 360 Kinect game and that is Fable The Journey. I love the Fable franchise, um, but I'm also really worried about the future of it. They cancelled Fable Legends, and this is one of the latest games they've released in the universe. It's not integral at all to the main games. You play as a carriage driver, and you basically go around like an on-rail shooter game. 
uh, using your hand to shoot magic balls and lightning attacks and stuff like that. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought this one if it wasn't Fable, but there we go. Alright guys, those were all of my gaming pickups for the last few months. I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for the next video, which will be figure games. I'll see you guys then.